Hi, I'm Scott Flowers with Cloud Ninjas. Today we're here to continue our series on the HPE Perliant DL360 Gen 9 server. In this video, we're going to specifically focus on memory. Let's get going. Well, hey, thanks for stopping by today to learn a little bit more about the HPE Perliant DL360 Gen 9 server. Do us a favor, if you find anything in this video useful, click that like and smash that subscribe. All right, let's hop in. So this video is specifically focused on RAM. We're going to go over the different speeds, the different sizes, the different types. We're going to show you the different memory channels. We're going to physically install them. Right, so let's just hop in. So what are the different speeds for the DL360 Gen 9? Well, that's a little bit of an ambiguous question. Um, the speeds that you can use are 2133, 2400, and 2666. No, you cannot use 2933 or 3200. Even if you have the latest BIOS, you've updated your firmware, you've done all your updates, and you've got the greatest V4 Prox inside, you still cannot use 2933 or 3200. So 2666 is technically the highest you can go, but that's going to clock down. So really 2400 is probably the true sweet spot as far as price for the speed that you're actually going to get. And the speed that is going to max out is that's where it gets a little ambiguous in the sense of, if you're putting in a V3 processor, okay, versus a V4 processor, the specs are going to be different overall as far as the max speed you're going to get. So what about with a V3? With a V3, the max speed you're going to get could be up to 1866, and realistically, you're probably going to get 1600. Well, let me rephrase it. You can actually get 2133, but if you're going to max this out as a whole and use all the DIMM channels, it's 1866. If you're only using one or two uh, of the slots in the channel, you can get up to 2133 and it might clock all the way down to 1600. So that's where I recommend going to the chart. We have it on our website. It's page 40 on the uh, HPE uh, quick specs and there's a chart and then you need to compare what CPU you have inside versus uh, what size module you're putting inside and it's going to break it all down. It's going to show you you could have a 2133 with one or two DIMM slots per channel and all the way down to 1600 or 1866 depending on your CPU, the DIMM you're using, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. That's where I say it gets a little ambiguous. For the V4 side, the highest speed you can get is 2400 and again, it depends on how many DIMMs you're putting in per memory channel. That depends on what CPU you're using, what uh, memory module size you're putting in and all that again factors into what is the actual max speed that you can get and that could range anywhere from 2133 to 2400 and might even clock down a little bit more if you're using all your dim slots. So again, I recommend going to page 40, check it out um, and you can see based off of what your current configuration is and what dims you're putting in, what the true top max out will be. And yeah, that's sorry, that's a tough explanation. It's hard to tell people that. Um, but again, that's what I recommend. So that way you can figure it out or you contact our sales team and we'll help you figure it out. Okay. Um, now, what sizes can I use? Well, you can go as low as a 4 gig, an 8 gig, a 16 gig, a 32 gig, a 64 gig, or all the way up to a 128 gig. But there's a key for the 128 gig and that brings us to what type of RAM can I use with my DL360 Gen 9 server? Well, you can use ECC registered, also known as an RDIM, or load reduced, known as an LRDIM. With ECC registered, you can max out using 24 64 gigs at 1.5 terabytes, whereas with load reduced, you can actually get up to 3 terabytes using 24 128 gigabytes, and that's the key to the 128 gigs is you have to have load reduced in order to make that work. So the max that you would get depend on the speed side would again depend on the channels you're putting in, uh, the, the uh, overall uh, DIMMs that you're putting in, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, but with a 128 gig stick, you can actually get up to 2400 uh, speed with the V4 Prox, so that's worth noting. So, all right, well, let's hop in and show you how to physically install the modules. Uh, but before we do, I need to grab my ESD gear. I'll be right back. All right, I have my ESD gear on. We are safe to open our machine. So I will put our RAM to the side, pop our latch, lift our top up, pretty much like any HPE server you've been in before. So as we discussed, there are 24 DDR4 DIMM slots inside. So where do you install your modules? How do I start? Great question. HPE does not make this as easy as Dell does. Okay, so Dell does it 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. That makes sense, right? HPE does it A12, B9, bingo. I mean, just kidding, but it feels like that. It's just some of the stuff that they do is just a little awkward, but at least it's color-coded, which is very helpful. If you look in between your DIMM slots, 
it's labeled. So you're going to technically put your first DIMM over on CPU 1, and this is CPU 2, which I should mention. CPU 1 controls 12 DIMM slots, and CPU 2 controls these 12 DIMM slots, which is important to note, which the whole color coding is important because that's the memory channels, and the memory channels let you know how to install your modules because there are uh, four memory channels per CPU and three DIMM slots per memory channel and that's very important information because you got to start at the beginning of your memory channel and white is the start of the memory channel, black is the second slot and blue is the third slot. So here's where you're going to go first. You're going to go to A12, B9, C1, D4. So that's it. This will be your first slot, your second slot, your third, your fourth, okay? Now, if you had one CPU and not two, then you would start going to the blacks, but most people are using two CPUs in this machine. So what you're going to want to do is actually move over here to the slots on this side, and it's going to be A12, B9, swing over here, C1, D4. So we're going to use all the white dim slots first before we use any of the blacks or blues. And people ask, well, why are you using all the white dim slots first and skipping around? Well, it's all about having maximum performance. And the best way to do that is have an even distribution of all your modules across all the memory channels. You don't want to overload a few channels and have a bunch of channels doing nothing. So a nice even distribution, which would be the start of every channel, which would be all the white dim slots. So when we sell our DIMM slots, we recommend putting them in groups of eight. So eight whites, then eight blacks, then eight blues. That's what we recommend. So now we're going to swing over here. And this is going to be the first black slot that you're going to use. And this is E11. And after E11, we're going to go to F8. We're going to swing around, go to G2, and then H5. Then we're going to swing back over here. And we're going to go E11, we're going to go over to F8, swing back over here, G2, and then we're going to do H5. And this is where I can say, you know, it's a little bit confusing because they're really going off the letters and not the numbers, and that just makes it a little bit tough overall to know which DIMMs to put them in. But now that we've filled up all the whites and all the blacks, we're going to swing over to the blues, and this is going to be I10, this is going to be J7, then we're going to go K3, and then L6. Swing back over here, we're going to do I10, J7, swing over here, K3, L6. So that is your order as a whole. So now we're actually going to physically install them, and we're going to start with just doing the whites, and for sake of time, you can follow the pattern that I just did and then move to the blacks and so forth. But what we're going to do, one of the things I always like to recommend is pop open all your tabs. So when you have the memory in your hand, you're not fumbling around and you're not worried about trying to open tabs or do anything like that, potentially drop your module. And I know that probably won't happen, but we're just trying to be safe here. So everything's nice and open. The next thing I like to recommend is if you check out our memory module here, there is a notch that is not quite centered, and this notch is known as a key. It's really important because it is not quite centered that you have to make sure your module is aligned properly. So if you have it flipped the wrong way, for instance, so this is the right way, so if you have it flipped this way, it physically would not fit and could potentially damage the leads on the module or damage the dim slot itself. So again, just make sure that you have your module uh, all lined up perfectly. So we're going to go ahead and go to A first. So over here in A, the other thing I like to mention, this is the most common user error that we see, is the module looks like it's installed, it looks like it's inserted, but it's not because you can see these tabs are sticking out. So you need to hear these two clicks. Those two clicks are the tabs physically locking into the side of the modules and pulling the leads down to make sure we have a firm connection with our DIMM slot. So now that we've done A, we're going to come over here to B. So again, make sure you have everything lined up. Click, click, and then we're going to swing out to C. And do note 
that this one does flip around and that's why I always point that out is because it's real easy to get into a good groove and from this side to this side that notch in the middle that key in the middle does switch and that is when problems arise so again I just like to point those things out because these are common user errors that could result in damage modules so there's our first four slots and now again if you have only one cpu this is when you would start filling up your blocks but if you have two you're going to swing over here to cpu2 and you're going to flip your module around because it's a different direction on this side again let's make it complicated <laughs> so we're going to go ahead and start with a and then we're going to come over here to b And then we're going to go over to C. And again, it flips around. So just make sure that you have your notch and your key always centered. And I stress that point because you can see it just keeps flip-flopping around. And it's really easy to not be paying attention, getting a good groove, and damage your module. So, all right, I've done the first eight. And again, for the sake of time, if you follow the pattern that I just did, and then you go to the black into the blue, that is how you would install it and do it properly. But again, for the sake of time, we're just going to go ahead and load this bad boy up and be right back. All right, so we have loaded up all 24 DIMM slots. And again, I want to stress the point of the speeds that once you load up all 24 and there are three DIMMs in all the channels, which means essentially you're using the blue, the speeds do change. And technically it changes on even if you have two in the, in the black. So check page 40 on the quick specs that we have on our website and that'll help you to understand the true speed depending on the size of the module, the CPU, and all that good stuff. And again, if you're not 100% sure, message our sales team and we are here to help. And on that note, if you made it this far, hey, click that like, smash that subscribe. If you're looking for any upgrades for RAM CPUs, SSDs, hard drives, NICs, etc., we stock all sorts of parts. If you need a custom built server, HPE, Dell, Supermicro, IBM, Cisco, we would love the opportunity to earn your data center's business or your home lives business. Please email us at sales at cloudninja.com. That's sales at cloudninja.com. And again, if you made it this far, click that like and smash that subscribe. Thanks for stopping by, guys. Take care.